them get 20 feet tall in Louisiana and and uh, California and some of the deep, some parts of Arkansas, there's some big button bushes. I tend to find them in the cypress swamps a lot. Here's a tree frog and here's another tree frog. This one was actually photographed on Earth Day 2000 seven out here when we had lots of folks so probably 10 people were on a walk with me back there and I actually saw that particular tree frog the day I made that picture not a great picture but uh, it looks better when it's not blown up so big this bird is a cat bird they're a close relative of a mockingbird and there are lots of them here and they they love the thicket but sometimes you'll see them out on a grassy lawn uh, because there's something good out there, maybe worms, maybe the seeds that have been mowed off, but for whatever reason, uh, most of the time, they're elusive. So that may be a crummy picture, but I'm just glad when I get a, a picture that's usable of uh, many species of birds. But these are big, but they're fast, just like the little guys, the little chickadees and, and wrens that hide from you and make it hard to get them. Of course, this is a woodpecker. This is the monarch butterfly, which is one of the most uh, well-known of all, and they, they migrate from Florida to Canada, I mean from um, Mexico, and about three generations make it to Canada and back, and the generation born in October in Arkansas and other southern areas are the ones that go to Mexico and, and spend the winter. They may live eight months in order to uh, be able to make the trip back and find some more milkweed. Their caterpillars can only live on milkweed. So another uh, another important plant that is the, we, well, on World Peace, Well and Prairie, the hardest thing is getting rid of Japanese honeysuckle. And we've worked for, for really back to 2000, trying to clear it up and see what uh, would, would come up. And what you get are, are very quick growth of native plants. But here's a honeysuckle that is native. And you see the, it's called a trumpet honeysuckle because of the way the, the bells look out here, but also because of the leaf formation. It's one leaf instead of the two that would normally be on many plants where the, the stem comes out. And uh, so they just surround that stem, and this comes out as little bitty thing and grows after a couple of weeks. Or it's, well, we don't have many here that are actually open yet this year. They're late, so many things are early, and they're larger than ever. But uh, these are laid on World Peace, Wetland Prairie. Here's some milkweed seed, not that species, but another one. Of course, we've got some uh, cedar wax wings and uh, the, a rare, in my experience, type of uh, coloration of dragonfly. But other people may have seen a lot of them in the past. Oh, I don't know. You want to see the other side of this? <laughs> Yes, at the farmer's market, I invite you. Um, I don't here because my dad makes me. What you been doing while you're here? Uh, climbing, getting hit in thorns. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You like it? You like wildland? You like wildland? Yeah. This is the other side of the, the big poster, we call it. And uh, you can see one of the founders, Dr. James Richard Bennett. Dick Bennett, he's called mostly, and he was the man who promised to donate $25,000 through the Omni Center, which he founded, and helped us buy this land and donate it to the city as a nature park. So the city did put in $50,000 from the uh, Tree and Trail Task Force uh, from the Coles lawsuit, but uh, Tyson Foods also put in 25000 and Ottawa and Arkansas produced really more than that because Melissa Terry, whom you see in this corner, about two years ago, she was out there with her youngest daughter, Luna, I mean her oldest daughter, Luna, uh, out here for Earth Day, and she was actually uh, involved with Audubon at that time and with the Tree of Trail Task Force, so she was one of the important people in making this happen. Uh, I hope we'll see today some goats. We had a promise that at least one would be brought out to eat some honeysuckle. And that was about 2007. And you see, folks, this lady, uh, 
was the owner of those goats and she brought them out. We got a pen thanks to uh, uh, a gentleman who works for the uh, county extension service and they ate all the honeysuckle in several spaces. We'd move the, f the fence and let them eat some more. So it was a lot of fun. And the goats are very, very interesting pet-like animals. Well, down here on the corner, you see Donna Sterna and poet John Rule, and they're looking out across things. Well, you can tell that's a Photoshop job because they're standing about where this sign is that day looking that way, and there was no map behind them. But this particular map shows the karst. In this area where we are, you see how red that area is? Well, World Peace Wetland Prairie is basically right in here and that, and it's the reddest part of that. It's the critical groundwater recharge area that you hear talked about in relation to springs and prairie land. And over behind here, uh, the, the area well, uh, the area back out there that belongs to Pinnacle Food Company also is very much a critical recharge area, and it has all the beautiful prairie plants. It has tall grass, native tall grass, and everything that uh, you expect to find. So all over Fayetteville, you find areas. Here out by Owl Creek, that redder looking stuff, that's a good and important recharge area for groundwater in our area. Let's see what else we've got on the... Uh, this is a group of students, university students from India, and they were out, and they were planting that year, and this year we had a big uh, production of daffodils from the ones they set out that day, and they were really the best they've ever been this year. Now here's um, Kurt Richardson, and his son Huxley, and Huxley, they're out there right now, and uh, Kurt did all the stonework for both the, the uh, Peace Circle and the Butterfly Garden in the background, and he is a stone maiden, he, Mason, and he did some of this, he did several benches like this on, out here, and if you look at the downtown square, the, the stonework that was done in 2008, I guess, he did a lot of that. He was one of several workers that, that had a busy hot summer working on that stone down there. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, here are some more of our friends. And uh, you will see these two ladies out here today, I believe. And these folks, uh, Edward Hedge Manick owns a, an art shop, and his wife is the main person there and down on uh, Government Avenue just off Martin Luther King. And so, well, this man's here because he was one of the first real experts that came out to say, yes, this prairie needs to be saved. And showing, he's showing us some of the native tall grass and some of the other plants that, that particular day. And he is now, I believe, retired, but they say still works every day at the office from the Arkansas uh, Natural Heritage Commission. But uh, he's been, he worked years ago when I was a young outdoor writer in Little Rock, and he was working on the uh, prairies, the railroad prairies out in eastern Arkansas. So he, he would identify those things. Some of the things we've got on here, the 1965 aerial view, which is available on the city site. And you've seen a lot of uh, Bruce Shackelford shows in the last year or two that Fru has has created for him, and she's filming us right now. And uh, Bruce likes to talk about prairie pimples. These these have been called, historically they're called mounded wetland prairie, mounded um, um, seasonal wetland in many cases. Well, these are the kinds of things that he's talking about, and they're out there uh, to the west. We're... we're um, I get confused easily. Okay, we're right here, and uh, this is all part of World Peace Wetland Prairie, and then this Pinnacle Prairie is where the water comes from that, that flows into here. And of course, the land right up here is now all an apartment complex, so it's quite different from 1965. 
but it's, it's, it's still a wonderful country. So water comes down from there. This is a fairly substantial wa watershed with water coming off there. And it does threaten, the, threaten to flood, flood homes to, to the uh, southeast of where we are right now because s s as they develop more, more and more uh, impervious surface is created. So you really can't, uh, you really can't predict how high the floods will get in the future if, if climate change results in more and more huge storms. So anyhow, here's, here's the same thing in more recent aerial photos. And uh, here's the National Cemetery. And this is wetland just on the north side of it. And on the, uh, well, this is, this is, uh, the branch that comes from Dixon Street and brings water down by the library up here, Frisco Trail. And uh, so this is all wetland along the north side of the old sail barn and uh, an important riparian zone, just as our stream uh, here, the town branch, comes off the university campus and flows on down there. And of course, both of them, the town branch goes east and then this common stream systems over here join it on the way to the west fork of the town branch of the White River. Well, any, this uh, thanks for spending time with this, Fru. Lauren Hawkins worked a, a lot of time making this, building this poster for us, and uh, it's truly uh, important that people think about their watershed. It, it's very important that we continue to think about the watershed, and that's one of the things we want kids to think about when they're out here today, is that that this will save their homes in the future. This will help uh, preserve and keep the water clean for the future, for future generations. This goes to Beaver Lake, whatever comes off here. And the more we absorb and let it get back into the caverns and back into the groundwater, where it'll gradually be cleansed and flow gradually into the streams, the better off we'll be. I'm Amy Wilson, Director of Public Affairs for Beaver Water District. We're here today at the annual uh, World Peace Wetland Prairie uh, Work Day on Earth Day. And each year we have been out here to provide water bottles. And this year we have a new bottle. Um, uh, that's aluminum and we have shopping bags. We want to encourage people to uh, get out and help take care of our great natural places in the uh, Beaver Lake watershed that feeds to the lake. That's how we keep our water quality good in Beaver Lake and it is the drinking water for most of Northwest Arkansas. We're really glad to be here today and um, encourage everyone in Northwest Arkansas to take care of the watershed and help keep the water flowing to Beaver Lake clean. Drinking water is um, uh, life for us. We have to have it to live. It has to be clean. And that's what Beaver Water District does. That's what we uh, that's why we exist. So we're glad to be here today and we applaud the Omni Center and the World Peace Wetland Prairie and all the volunteers out here that come every Earth Day and throughout the year to take care of the World Peace Wetland Prairie. It's very important. Do you think that'd be softer for the baby and the inside of yeah. the twigs in the middle? Yeah. Isn't that nice? If you saw this on the forest floor, this is a ground bird. It makes its nest on the ground. If you were yeah. walking in the woods and you saw that, would you think it was just a pile of leaves? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like kick it. Yeah, that's good camouflage, huh? Yeah, it's yeah, called but the it's oven bird. But, oven it, but, 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 but you know why it's that's called the oven bird? Do. Do you know why it's called the oven bird? I do. Because, because when leaves are rotting on the forest floor, they put off heat. So if this bird needs to leave the nest for a little while, it can pile those leaves over the eggs and make like a little oven. So it's it got the oven bird. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you know what but I should then you have on their feet. The, or, the, orchard, the northern oreo and the orchard oreo, and they are baskets. They are, th this one is a woven basket Look made of entirely. Grass. This is made of grass. And this one is made of animal hair. Oh, oh. And play with human hair. Yeah, sometimes. Well, well, would work, well, yeah. This, this oh, you know, this one I want to show you next. Hey, Look at oh, this. This is what they are. And you know those little white mints called tic-tacs? 
Ornithologist is a scientific name for a bird, a person who studies birds. Yeah. And, and we happen to have one of the greatest bird watchers in Arkansas living right in, Ar in Fayetteville. His name is Joe Neal. And he found these nests and gave them to us I've to share. I've seen that guy. So we have special. All right, you ready? Yep. Here we go. Did you ever climb up in a tree when the leaves are popping in the early spring? Find a nest with a bird egg in it? You ever wonder just how they did it? Did you ever look at that nest real close? Well, ain't it amazing the way they're wove? Each one is their very own. One, one of a kind, kind perfect home. home. Little bit of sticks and a little bit of grass. Little bit of a feather or two. Place with carry a little bird beak with a dab of mud. Whole lot of little bird love. A lot of hard work, no time to rest for a little bird to build a little bird nest. Now a hummingbird's nest is big as your thumb. Bet you never, ever, 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 ever seen one. They make them out of dandelion fluff. Glue them together with spider web stuff. And there's an owl they call the elf. Well, she lives in the desert all by herself. She likes to make her little nest in the middle of a prickly cactus. Little bit of sticks and a little bit of grass. Little bit of this and a little bit of that. Little bit of furry strand of hair, a feather or two. Fish with carry, little bird beak with a dab of mud. Whole lot of little bird love. A lot of hard work, no time to rest. For a little bird to build a little bird nest. Now a oven bird makes a real nice nest hidden in the leaves of the deep forest. And a bower bird makes a real nice home with things that sparkle like silver and gold. And, and a barn owl oh, and a barn swallow build, build their, their nest, nest in the barn in the hollow. hollow. But those old barns is falling down. But they don't have to build their nest downtown. Little bit of sticks and a little bit of grass. Little bit of this and a little bit of that. Little bit of fur, a strand of hairy feather or two. Place with carry a little bird beak with a dab of mud. Hold on. Not a hard work, no time to rest For a little bird to build a little bird nest Ta-da! I We are going to, I want to do one more thing And then we are going to, the next thing that's going to happen is We're going to get you guys to help us build a fairy village I don't know if you've heard about this yet It's actually a, a large egg It's, it's like it's, an ostrich it's an egg ostrich It's egg. getting ready to hatch Really? And yeah. I thought I would show you guys. Is it going to so, hatch today? That might, right in front of us. Oh. It has. Wouldn't that be awesome? Oh. Yeah. I'm keeping it around. I've never seen a... We I've never seen, seen a... Egg. Oh, we just been incubating it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Tell him wrong, Tell him. He scared <laughs> me. Does anybody have any questions? Do you have an egg? No. <laughs> well, we actually have an emu, a real emu. Egg. You know, I think it would really be exciting yeah. is if you I really am. listen to those birds. Mm -hmm. Keep an eye on those. Keep an eye and an ear on those birds because they're singing. This is the time to listen to birds in the springtime, and it's really a, a wonderful time. It, I, I get so excited every spring. It's my favorite time of year. Yes. When I went to my grandpa's house, they every time I go to my grandpa's house, um. Bob has binoculars, yeah. and he lets me use them. That's oh, exciting. that's exciting. Makes the birds come right up close, doesn't There's it? Yeah. And he also has bird food, and he has some tough to put in it. Oh, that's, that's spider. spider. Well, thank you guys so thank much. Thank you very much. We're going to get set up here. Stay tuned, because we're gonna, the fairy village is coming next. Don't okay. step Hello, I'm Dig Bennett, and the founder of the Omni Center for Peace, Justice, and Equality. Ecology. Oh. <laughs> Equality and ecology. ecology and human rights and peace, uh, justice, economic justice and social justice and lots of different purposes. But this is something that we have yearned to have for years and at last we're able to achieve it with the city and with uh, Tyson's corporation. And now with the thanks uh, to, and thanks to so many volunteers, this has become a treasure for the city of Fayetteville. This afternoon, we're going to have uh, uh, tours for uh, bird identification, for flowers, 
plants of all kinds. Uh, we have lovely music by uh, local musicians. It's just going to be a, a place to celebrate nature inside the city limits of Fayetteville. Thank you. Well, it was uh, Lauren and Aubrey and Kirk and Jennifer and other neighborhood people uh -huh. uh, wanted to preserve this land right here, the two acres of wetland prairie on the back. Okay. And then this, this is not uh, native here. This is, right. has this been is... filled in. Right. Uh, so the uh, city put up some money, Tyson's put up some money, wow. and then at the last, when it looked like they were short mm -hmm. of money to ever get it done, then uh, Omni uh, finished oh, paying for it. So I it's see. a partnership among those three groups, and I, if I left out somebody, I, I'm sorry. I, there might be another person through might be able to find out who, who it was. And since then, um, the uh, Audubon Society um, got a grant to pay for an intern to work on on this for a whole year. Oh. So Audubon has contributed a great deal. Uh -huh, the and Audubon Society. Audubon Society. Uh huh. Uh huh. And but generally, it's just this free association here. There's people arriving. Uh -huh. um, you can see that there's no one walking around. Okay, you troops got march yeah, over here. Yeah, directing the activities. Uh -huh. and, and Kirk made this entire um, stone area here. It's a peace sign. And the spirit of peace is here throughout. Of people working together in their own ways, in their own pace, to get to preserve some land from uh, sure. development. And so it just it just amazes me.
Birthday. Mm. Happy Earth Day. Thank you. 
story about Willie the Weeper. Willie the Weeper, the chimney sweeper. <laughs> Some day, too many pills he will take him. Screaming that he died, and we'll forget to wake. Howdy, 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 howdy,